I want to talk a little bit about Oyata Shuffle. And this is a thing that we do where we take all of the kata hand and feet motions, all the little snapshots of kata positions that we do, and we shuffle them up and draw a couple and try to figure out how we can put those two motions together. A little background on this, Taika Seiyu Oyata originally trained with Uagushku and Wakanaguri Tanmei. Those instructors gave him a lot of knowledge just after uh, World War II. And one of the things he got from them was a series of scrolls. And on all of these scrolls were pictographs. A couple of the scrolls were predominantly just like kata positions. Uh, various hand positions, feet positions, like you would see in a kata. You know, just various, various pictographs. And Taika was told that once his instructors passed on, they passed away, they were rather old, they were in their 90s when World War II ended. The way Taika could get better is if he kind of randomly took two or three pictographs from a scroll and put them together and then tried to visualize how those two or three might work together. Flash forward, Taika comes to the United States, gets a hold of a Polaroid camera, has somebody take pictures of him doing his core 12 fundamental kata in just their fundamental hand positions and foot positions and now he has these snapshots that he had on the scrolls essentially but he can now shuffle them where when it was on a scroll it's out you know laid out on a table or he might put it up on the wall or whatever he would just have to kind of randomly pick two and it was kind of hard to be random but now after he had somebody take his polaroid puts all his Polaroids in that box, shuffles them up, stirs it up, shakes it up, whatever, he can pull out two Polaroids and see more randomly, try to put the things together. So that's the kind of principle we have based this game that we call the Oyata Shuffle off of. And it's so named because we got it from Oyata, even though he got it from his instructors. We got it from Oyata and it's basically shuffling the deck to try to randomize your putting things together putting different pieces together so pretty much what everybody calls bunkai is breaking down and researching the various kata motions there's all sorts of different kata motions depending on how many kata you have in your system and what Taika would do is pull a couple of things randomly together and see if he could find something. Now, as he was doing this originally, it he would say most often he would not come up with two things to do. So he would take two motions uh, out of kata, pull them out of his Polaroid, and then he would try to see either in the order he drew them in or he could even reverse the order trying to just figure out how those hand and foot positions might be paired and try to figure out a technique, at least one technique, regarding that. Uh, if you got really lucky initially, uh, you might draw two and you might be able to take these two and come up with a technique and then reverse them and come up with a different technique. But initially he said there was a lot of failures. He'd draw two and sit there and think about it for a long time and not get anything. The fundamental kind of rules with this that I wanna talk about are you draw two and you look at them from a couple of different perspectives. One, you think about which way the bad guy is facing. Is the bad guy facing you or is the bad guy facing away from you? Or is he facing to the right or to the left? That kind of fundamental thing. Of course, you know, 360 degrees, uh, you guys can be turned all sorts of different ways. Uh, but 
that's what you're kind of thinking of. Think of those angles. Obviously, I can be, Taika talked a lot about spider web from uh, Wakanaguri, his Chinese lineage instructor. He got the concept of the spider web. So you can be the person inside at the center of the spider web and your opponent can be outside facing you or he can be outside facing away from you. And conversely, you can be outside the spider web looking in uh, or you could both be facing the same way as in somebody coming up behind you for a bear hug. So you got to think openly about all the different possible ways that you and the, the person attacking you can be in. All those different body positions and there are a ton of them. As you start out in the martial arts, you don't, you're not going to probably know a lot of those positions. So it is kind of useful for a young person in the arts to partner with somebody that's been in the arts for a lot longer time initially until the young student gets a little more uh, techniques under their belt, et cetera, et cetera. So you would take two moves initially. That's usually how I start that. I take a random draw of two cards. And usually what I do is I have two students working on it. So I'll have each one of them grab a card and partner up and then try to figure out how those two, either in the, the one order, the first student and the second student, or reverse the order and see if they can come up with a, a technique. And that's the research, the breaking down. I'm taking something that probably, that may, it may end up with your random draw being the same kata, or it may be two completely different kata. You just never know what you're gonna get. So we got uh, part of a kusanku and then a motion uh, out of Nahanchi Nidan or Nahanchi Sandan. You know, you just, you never know with the random, or you might end up with two, we, We've done so much of this, occasionally we've ended up with two techniques sequentially, just randomly sequentially, uh, from the exact same kata. All right, so that is your reach, research and kind of breaking down things, trying to make techniques out of it. A lot of times you're not gonna come up with something. If after three minutes I don't, my students don't have anything at all, I'll have them essentially go fish. So one of them throws a card away, and then they bring out another card. So again, we drew uh, yet another Nahanchi motion. So right now I've got two Nahanchi motions. Uh, this one is repeated uh, in different kata, so, uh, and so is this one. So they could be taken from the same kata. So again, two students get together, uh, draw two cards, and then they try to come up with some specific technique. Additionally, as they're thinking about the angles, the different ways they can be attacked, the bad guy can push, like one-handed, two-handed. They can punch. It could be a right punch, a left punch. It could be a bear hug. There's all sorts of different attacks. So you got to start making your students think about all those different things. So that's basically the process. And we've D done this numerous times at seminars. We've done paired groupings. Uh, I've had two people grab two cards and work with it for three minutes. Uh, after three minutes, they'll come up and give a presentation on what they found if they figured something out. Once that time period is up and they give a presentation or they, they just say they weren't able to come up with anything, if they weren't able to come up with anything, usually I will look at it and see if I can come up with something kind of as that third party instructor that's done it more than any of my students. But that's the goal. So get them to see something. Once that is done, I rotate half the class. So half the class stays where they're at. The, your partner, one of the partners goes to another group and they keep the same cards. So this person's gonna stay where he's at and, the, and his partner is gonna trot off uh, usually clockwise or counterclockwise. I just have the whole room rotate, kind of like we're playing volleyball. And then in comes another person with a different card. And so now each person has some preconceptions of what they were thinking about before because they already had this card. But now they're with somebody else. So now 
I've got my move, which I already had some thoughts about, and I move to another person, and I've got a second card. Then after I do that for a little while, typically what I'll do is I will break the class into three person groups. So now you got three cards and you're trying to figure out how I can make these three cards from probably different kata, maybe the same, and put them into some order. And it could be one, two, three. It could be two, one, three. It doesn't really matter. So that's your basic concept. And again, if somebody's having problems, you just have them go put their card back in the pile and they go fish and they grab something. Uh, particularly when I'm teaching at a seminar, there's a lot of times people are like, I've never seen this kata move. I don't have any concept of this kata move. I don't have that kata in my lineage, all right? Okay, go fish, go grab another card, uh, and if it takes two or three draws before you get something that you can kind of relate to, particularly when this is the first time ever going through this, uh, it's, it's a little bit easier for them. The first few times you do this, it's a little bit complicated to get the concept of it. I'm trying to take one snapshot of time from a kata and put it with another snapshot of time from a kata. Could be the same kata, could be different kata. All right, that's your basic rules. Intermediate, all right? So intermediate kind of concept is once you get fairly good at that, not saying you're gonna get something every single time, but once you kind of got the concept, then as an intermediate step, we're gonna kind of switch some things to where it's the Han Shin concept. Ka Han Shin, Jo Han Shin upper body, lower body, upper body controls lower body, lower body controls upper body. So now what I'm gonna do is I've got two kata moves. We'll just go ahead and say this is um, uh, the Yoe from the Hanshi Shodan. The other card is the end of Tamari Seisan or Niseishi. It's actually in uh, Pasai as well, kind of the hand positions, legs, vary during the course of those kata, what you're doing specifically at the time. But those are the deals. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna take my, we'll call it Saison. I'm gonna take the Saison hand positions and cross pollinate and consider that and the footwork from the beginning of Nahanshi Shodan. And that's where we've already opened the foot. We've already moved the foot at the very beginning uh, so this, the, the fitter, feet are open. And then I'm going to use the forward stance or Saison stance with the Nahanshi hand motions. So that's our intermediate concept. I'm starting to try to think even farther outside of the norm uh, of the kata breakdown process and research and then pairing, kumiawase, I'm pairing things from different kata. All right, so that's kind of our intermediate step, right? And that probably won't come until you've been doing, playing the regular game for, for quite a while. Third kind of step, tier three, advanced, whatever you want to call it, I don't really care, is I'm going to take me Hanshin, Hidari Hanshin. So I'm going to start splitting the body even more. So I'm going to take the right hand, which is low in this, and the left hand, which is up high. I'm gonna take that and then my partner is gonna look at it from the opposite perspective. So I'm gonna split right and left. And I can also do the same thing down with the legs. So fundamentally, Taika thought of one of the big things that Kata did was get you to put your hands and your feet in positions they've never been in before, right? Humans, before we started doing some sort of arts, uh, our hands and feet didn't do most of the positions that we do in the kata, right? Uh, maybe a, a natural stance, <laughs> we did, but for the most part, a lot of the hand positions are things that we just didn't do before. 
or if we did, they weren't things that we were in frequently and we didn't put power into them of any uh, power or efficiency into them. So kata teaches you all these different hand and feet positions, but they don't have to be to come up in a technique. They don't have to be exactly like we do them in the kata at intermediate and advanced. I can borrow the right hand from Kusan Ku and a left hand motion from Pinan Shodan and partner those together and then change the footwork to something that's not either of those things from that kata. So that's where we start getting really into the upper levels of it. At any rate, those are just some basic kind of rules to get you started in Oyata Shuffle. Uh, I did want to talk about the cards. So makeplaincards.com is the website where we made our cards. And there's numerous kinds of places where it's rather popular right now that people make their own games, not necessarily and probably not very often martial arts related, but people make all sorts of playing games and there's places people go and they introduce their game to people and they play them. Well, makeplaincards.com is where I just got to on a Google uh, response and we made an initial deck of cards. All we did was take photographs of our decks of card. Or all we did was take photographs of our kata positions and if something repeated for the most part, we didn't replicate it unless maybe the hands uh, were just slightly different than the previous version, the feet were slightly different than another version. Uh, but if everything was exact, then we didn't repeat. I did because makeplaincards.com would charge me the same if I had 100 cards or if I had 90 cards. Uh, I did put some of the intermediate motions in between, so like uh, the yoi motion in the Hanchi Shodan, instead of just the top and the bottom motion, I did a snapshot in between when it's close to the chest. So I ended up with close to 200 cards, which, which cost me about $50 to make a deck of cards like that. Now, these were fine for the dojo. Later on, as I started teaching this at seminars, I decided to make a larger deck of cards. They're five by sevens. <laughs> And so I've got 200 cards. Uh, most of them are uh, positions from the kata. Uh, some of them are just some random photographs of Taikasei Oyata in various hand positions that were not necessarily from the original 12. A few of those are from the Shiho Hapo Note series uh, and maybe even Mio Hapo Note series hand positions. So those are all in a deck of cards. Now you can buy them in any kind of card format you want. Five by seven works great at seminars. The small, normal playing deck of cards uh, is what we typically used in the dojo until I got the tarot cards, the five by sevens.